Good afternoon, everybody. How are you doing? It's me again. And it's Wednesday, the 18th of November. Can you believe it? This year is in the biggest hurry possible to be over and done with. It's so crazy. Um, I just want to give a shout out to Leonie. Thank you so much for watching my videos. I really, really appreciate it. And Tina, if you're watching, no, Leone is not a stalker. She's a loyal subscriber and I really appreciate that. So thank you for watching my videos. And can I just ask anybody, if you're watching my video and you really like what you watch, please remember to give it a thumbs up. That would really help me. So today my topic is toxic friendships. And when I was in my early 20s, when I was a new Christian, I was assigned this person as a mentor and... I don't know why that she was assigned to me as a mentor because there's nothing about her that I could emulate. Um, she, to me, was a walking, talking example of how not to be as a human being. She didn't have many positive traits. She was seriously insecure. Um, she, had, she, had, she had more problems than I did, to be quite frank. So I couldn't quite understand why she was assigned to me as a mentor. But anyway, she... As she tells it, she was always the fat girl at school. She was a, the kid at school that um, was very insecure and she felt she was surrounded by all these skinny, pretty girls. And she knew that naturally, as she tells it, these are her words, naturally people wouldn't necessarily be attracted or drawn to her. So what she did was like she tried to align herself with the pretty girls, with the cool girls, with the cool boys and ride their coattails so that when the spotlight fell on them, by default deflect on her because she was with them, she was hanging out with them. And she she just kind of like put herself in there. She made herself the, the go-to person for advice. She was always a bit of a know-it-all, had to have um, opportunities for people to hear her knowledge. Even if you didn't ask me anything, she just blurt things out for, for whatever reason. So that's, that's the kind of person she was. In her mind, she was unattractive. In her mind, she was fat. In her mind, she was a misfit. In her mind, she needed to hang out with these people, befriend them, and then you know she could kind of get some kind of kudos because like, she was kind of, kind of on, the, on their, on their um, periphery, kind of. That's just what she was like. And this is a person that was assigned to me as a mentor. So... Um, I just was, you know, when I look back, I think about a number of the things that she did that were not right. I remember one time we had this event at our church, and like she didn't have an outfit for it, and I had an outfit to lend her. So I lent her an outfit, she wore it, and when the next Sunday she didn't have it with her. So I said to her, oh, I think I let it go for maybe like a couple of weeks. I said to her, oh, can I have my outfit back? If you, could you bring my outfit back next Sunday? She's like, yeah, why is there a problem? I was like, what do you mean by that? The problem is I lent you an outfit two weeks ago and you ain't returned it. So as it's mine, I'd like it returned. And I had to ask her several times over a period of months. And it turns out, that until today, I've never got the outfit back. She somehow lost it. Didn't have the manners to offer to pay for it. In fact, it, when she eventually apologised some years after she lost it. And it was, it was because she was apologising because she wanted to borrow something else. Oh, I'm, this is actually it. Oh, yeah, I'm really sorry. I lost your outfit. And she walked away. And sometime later she came back. Um, we've got the or whatever, whatever event. Can I borrow something of yours? I said, no. You're not borrowing anything of mine. I thought, this girl has no concept of decency. How dare you come back and ask me to borrow you something after you've lost my outfit and I've, uh, I've displayed such a disgusting attitude with it. How dare you come back and ask me? But there was that. It was like... She would only hang around with me when the group that she really wanted to be part of the in-crowd with, or who, who she deemed to be the in-crowd, it was only when they were too busy for her that she'd kind of look me up and like we'd probably hang out and go for a coffee or whatever. You know, it's, he, saying, hearing me say it now makes me cringe that I was so silly and so naive, but that's, I, I had my own issues. I didn't know boundaries. I didn't know when to say enough was enough. I let people in my life far longer than I had the right to be there in a number of occasions. And um, one of the other things that she did was that she fancied this guy something rotten, rotten. And it wasn't all one way, to be fair. It did appear that he liked her to a degree, but I just don't think as much as she liked him. So I suggested that he date this other girl who was available, who was emotionally stable, such and such. And so he ended up dating that girl and eventually ended up marrying that girl. And they're still together today. But early on in that relationship, I remember we all went to someone's house and this particular person, I'm talking about a toxic mentor I had, 
she was speaking to this guy in such a way like how they used to do before. Like when they were together, I didn't want you to know that they were talking about something. They'd speak in this little coded way and you, you, you were frozen out basically. You know like how sometimes when people are of another nationality and I don't want you to know what they're talking about, they'll talk, use their own language to talk to each other in front of you, which is very rude. It was that kind of thing they do. You know, they're speaking English, they're speaking in a coded way, so that unless you're part of what they were doing, you wouldn't know what was going on. And so she did that in front of his new wife. I thought that was really out of order. That was really bad. And I noticed the new wife was feeling quite uncomfortable because she knew that they were quite close together. So I thought, you know, I've got to say something to her. Even though in her, in, in her mind, she was here by this mentor she was here and I was here the relationship as she knew it was it was her job to put into my life it's her job to tell me what to do it was her job to advise me it was my job to listen as far as she's concerned it was a sensei grasshopper relationship as far as she was concerned but I saw what I saw and I knew it wasn't right and I had to say something to her and so I think it was the next Sunday I said it I said to her listen I, I it was quietly it wasn't in front of people I pulled her aside to make sure we were alone I said, listen, what you did that day wasn't right. And his wife was sitting there looking really uncomfortable. And um, her first thing was to defend herself. Then she started screaming her head off at me in the street. To be quite honest, I came this close to slapping her in her face. I thought, how dare you talk to me like that? Who do you think you are? Yes, so you're my mentor. Doesn't mean you can talk to me any anyhow. You were wrong. You know you've got a history with this guy. You know you fancy this guy. You know... Um, that his new wife is there. I, I've been part of that entire journey, so I knew why I spoke to her the way I spoke to her. I wasn't disrespectful, but I needed to, to let her know that what she was doing with that guy that in that instance was not right. Whatever they had, she had to let it go. No more coded messages in front of people. And she was screaming the hell off in the street. And she never actually, looking back now, she never actually apologised for doing that. She just never actually apologised for doing it. I remember the next day she called me to tell me something. And I was just really off with her. And then I put the, ph then, um, I put the phone down afterwards, after we had a conversation, and called me and goes, are we cool? I thought, why would we call you donut? But stupidly, I said, yeah, everything's fine. Everything's fine. Yeah. And I just like kind of hung up on her. And later on, the relationship went back to normal. Now, as I said before, it's because I had my own issues. I was insecure. I should have kicked her to the curb prior to that. There were many, many, many things that she did. I should have kicked her to the curb a long time ago. But I didn't. And um, the final straw for me was, I mean, I she when she was saying that she was wanted to get married and everything, and after this guy that she really did love got married to someone else, and she was really distraught. And I was, you know, I was there comforting her. I'd pray for her, pray for her to have a new husband, or new husband, pray for her to have a husband, to pray for her. And I'd always be there to listen to her, always be there to kind of, you know, try and, and encourage her that, okay, she isn't married, but she wants to be married one day, she will be. And sure enough, one day she was. And um, I wasn't, you know, I know I know the relationship changed because obviously as you're getting to know this new partner, you've got to spend more and more time with them and less and less time with the people you used to hang out with. But yeah, you know, I kind of um, didn't really see her that much anymore, which I didn't really care about, you know. And I just let things go on as I were. And then she got married and then she moved to go and be with, with her new husband. And then one day I called somebody to speak to them about something. And... He, he said, okay, yeah, and she, you know, we were talking, he goes, oh, and so-and-so is here, let's just call her Nancy. He goes, oh, Nancy's here, do you want to speak to her? Just digressing slightly, I really hate when people do that. I'm calling to speak to them, and they're saying in front of the other person that they are there, would I like to speak to them? Obviously, I can't now say that, because if I say no, I'm going to look like a, you know, a bit of a sulky so-and-so, or just I'm going to look like I'm rude. But I was calling to talk to this particular individual and he's offering the phone to somebody else, which I really can't stand when people do that. But anyway, rant over. So I said, yeah, go on then. And the first thing she did when she got the phone, she goes, oh my gosh, hi. I've forgotten all about you. Out of sight, out of mind. Or with, with you as a case of out of sight, out of mind. And I thought, you cow. For me, right there, right then, the relationship was over. Done. Done, 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 done. I thought, who do you think you are? Who do you think you are? How dare you speak to me like that? But do you know what? People treat you the way you allow them to treat you. And I had not checked her 
years previously and because I hadn't been checking her, she felt she could say things like that to me. And actually, as an aside, after that screaming match in the street, when, well, I wasn't screaming at her, she was screaming at me, acting all, acting like she was deranged. She goes, oh, I think I know I did that. I did it because I could. Mm -hmm. That's what she said. She did it because she could. And again, in my mind, I was cussing her out. In my mind, I was calling her all kinds of names. I didn't have the confidence to come out and say, tell her what I truly thought about her, which I should have. You've been bullied at school. You remember how it feels. You know you hated it. You know it made you feel like rubbish. Some choose to say, right, I was bullied at school, so I'm not going to bully anybody else ever because I know what it feels like. Where others say, right, I was bullied at school. First chance I get, I'm going to bully other people. Nancy was the second lot of people. She knew what it's like to feel unpopular, to feel ostracized and whatever. So instead of saying, well, I know what that's like, I'm not going to do that to anybody else. She decided that she was going to do that to me and to whoever else she felt was beneath her. And... It's taken me a long time to kind of really see what she's really and truly like. And I remember saying, thinking to myself, you know, I always say of these women that were in abusive relationships, man, you're so stupid. Well, I, ju I was judging them basically, which I shouldn't do, but I was judging them. Why don't you get out of that relationship? Why are you so weak? Get out of the relationship. But then I had to stop and ask myself, was there any difference between these people and their abusive, putting up with their abusive partners and me putting up with this abusive mentor? What was the difference? I was equally weak, right? So I had to check myself, ask myself, why did you allow it to go on for so long? Why did you allow her to treat so badly for so long? Why did you kick her to the curb sooner? I have no idea. Maybe I was afraid. Maybe I just didn't have the confidence to do it. Maybe I thought, well, she was kind of the, the most regular fixture in my life, as sad as that sounds. She was a very regular fixture in my life. And I, and I thought, well, if she goes, who else is there going to be? But... Uh, I should just let her go because she was not adding anything to my life at all. She was, you know, always kind of very condescending, very patronizing. She was the one that always had to have all of the answers. She thrived on it. Any situation, even if you were talking to her, she'd stick her gob in there and she wanted to give the case closed answer, the, the answer that no one could respond to. And she always had to let people know just how much she knew. Always, always, always. I remember one time, Nobody had asked her this, you know, but out of the clear blue sky, she said, um, oh, phlegm isn't biodegradable. And in my mind, I was thinking, who asked you that? You weren't talking about phlegm. What are you telling us that for? But that's the kind of person she, she was. She had, she, she was, uh, uh, she was one of the worst people I've ever met in my life, in a nutshell. Easy one of the worst people. But I allowed her in my life. I am responsible for how she treated me because I allowed it. I didn't stand up for myself. I didn't draw barriers in, in, in all lines in the sand with her and say this far and no further. I should have done because she was categorically out of order on many, 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 many occasions. But I tolerated it because I was weak, because I didn't know my worth as an individual, because I didn't value myself as an individual. And I let her get away with murder. But I, as I thought about it and thought about it and thought about it, you know, I can see that while she had her own issues, yes, she did. I have to say it's 50-50-50. As I said before, people treat you the way you allow them to treat you. And it's really kind of helped me to be very kind of clear about what I will and won't put up with in relationships. Whether it's, you know, um, just regular mates or in a relationship with a man going forward. And... What I did, as a result of that like, final conversation with her, I went through my phone and I started to look at everybody who was in there and ask myself, what type of relationship do I have this person? What type of impact does this person have on my life? If it's negative, I deleted them. If it's positive, I let them stay. And to be quite frank, I deleted possibly 80% of the people out of my phone at that time because I had to just really kind of, it's almost like my eyes were opened and with that last nasty comment that girl made, I had to really kind of evaluate who my friends truly were and to figure out were there any more like her in there, in my life rather. And if so, I need to cut them out, I need to kick them to the curb and not apologise for it. I've even done it on Facebook when people were out of order, I, I unfriend them 
I don't care. I'm not having any toxic individual in my life. For when they show they are nasty, from when they show they're disrespectful, they're gone. If I don't apologize and change, they're gone. I am not allowing them in my life at all. And so I just kind of put together a little checklist of, um, sorry, I was just looking to the side with my laptop because I've got a little list here. I was just looking at, and, and saying to myself, what criteria should I use to evaluate whether or not somebody is good for me? I'll share it with you. Do I feel like an equal in the relationship? Does my friend like to give advice or suggestions more than they like to take it from me? With Nancy there, she would always, always, always give me the benefit of her wisdom. But heaven forbid I would try and do the same. Because as far as she's concerned, I had nothing to say to her. I, I had nothing worth saying to her. Number two, do they drain you emotionally and spiritually? Nancy was a big drain, particularly about the scene with wanting to get married. Man, she was wearisome. She was tiresome. She was just, ugh. Whenever she fancied somebody, I'd be the first person she'd call and she'd talk to me about it and I'd have a conversation, but she would just talk for the longest time. It felt like torture, actually. It really did feel like torture. In fact, I used to say to myself, my idea was torture, of torture, would be me being stuck in a room with her and her yakking incessantly because she would not stop. She would just talk, talk, talk. And it literally felt like I was being tortured to death. She was, she was that bad. Um, number three, does your friend only contact you to hang out when they have nothing else to do? Do they only want to socialize with you for their own benefit? So is it like, um, you know, let's just say there's something else they're going to want to go to later on, but they've got nothing to do in between this time and that time. Is it then that they call you? Are you like a stopgap for them whilst, or a stepping stone onto bigger and better things? Do they invite you to the things that they're going to? It's very important you assess how your friends treat you. Very important. Number four, do they talk to you in a way that's disrespectful often? Like with Nancy, do they disrespect your person? Do they just talk to you anyhow? When they're rude or when they do things that are wrong, do they apologise? Is it a genuine, sincere apology? Or do they just like act like, yeah, so what? Friends, when they harm each other, when they do things that are wrong, should be quick to apologise to salvage their relationship. They can't just take as red, well, you know, we've been friends for she knows I'm sorry, or he knows I'm sorry. No, you need to open your mouth and say the words, I am sorry. Humble yourself and apologise when you've done something wrong. If they don't humble themselves and apologise to you when they do things that are out of order to you, you need to figure out what kind of relationship this is and how they treat you view as a person. Do they talk to other people like that as well or is it just you? Or is it a certain type of person they talk to like that? Ask yourself that question. Do, they tend to, do you tend to feel mostly good or bad after spending time in their company? Like, typically, when I've had a really good time with mates, I feel elated. I'm excited to see them again. I can't wait to see them again because we have so much fun. But with her, or a few other people I can think of, typically I'd think, man, that was a waste of time. Or why did I go? I should have just stayed at home. Or I should have done something else. If, if you're thinking the latter, then you need to evaluate, should this person be in your life? Are you afraid of challenging whether do or say things that aren't right? Why are you afraid? You might not even think that it's fear, but if they're doing something that you know is wrong and you don't, don't challenge them, you need to ask yourself, why aren't you challenging them? Why are you letting them get away with things that are wrong as, as far as you're concerned or that grates on you and just make you feel bad? Why don't you challenge them? Go through that list and ask yourself, if your friends check some of these, you've got some soul searching to do and you've got some decisions to make. Because as far as I'm concerned, life is too short to spend with people that don't deserve you. It really is. Walk away from every single toxic relationship you have. I remember there's this girl, she was quite young at the time, she was probably six, I'd say between 15 and 17, I can't quite remember exactly how old she was, but I remember her saying at the time, her dad had said to her, you can count your good friends on one hand. And I remember thinking, wow. What a bitter woman. What happened to you that you're saying that? Because I, I just thought you know, everyone could be your friend. But as I've grown older, I've seen what she means. True friends are in the minority, not the majority. Yeah, you can have like lots of uh, uh, acquaintances and people around you. But when you actually list what your definition of a friend is, you'll find that very few, the proverbial handful, will check that list. 
So I just want to say to you, like, you know, if during the call, if you're, you know, like doing like I did, going through your phone list and ask yourself, who is my true friend? And you discover they've only got a handful left. Thank God for them. Thank God you've got a handful of true friends left because true friends are very, very, very rare jewels and they need to be protected because there's very few of them. So I'll just say to you, just, you know, check yourself, check your check your friendship list, check the people you hang out with. Don't be afraid just to only have one or two people to hang out with. It's far better. Do not let anybody stay in your life and abuse you. Don't do it. Don't do what I did. That girl's in my life. For, is it 10 years? 10 years. 10 long years. I should have kicked her out from year one. It was. It went on for that long. I should have kicked her out from year one. But I'm wiser. I've learned from it now. It won't happen again now. I'm very quick to uh, to kick someone to the curb when I do things that I don't appreciate. If I take a disrespect, if I don't apologise, if I spoke to them about something that I don't apologise, they're gone. I ain't got time to play. I'm, ser I'm serious. The older I get, the less time I have for certain things that I would tolerate in my 20s. I don't tolerate a lot of things now. I really, really don't. I don't, I don't even like that word tolerate. I need to put up with. Why should I put up with rubbish? Mm -mm, I ain't got time for it. So that's my story. And let me know if you've had any toxic relationships. If you have, are you still in it? And if so, have any of these points helped you realise that it's time to call it a day? And if you were in a toxic relationship, how did you get out of it? And what has your life been like since? So I really look forward to hearing from you. Thank you so much for watching. Watching. Watching even. Thumbs up the video if you like it. And I really look forward to seeing you in the comments. Enjoy the rest of your day. Take care. Bye.